Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. <laughs> Today is Monday, the 12th of April. And um, <clears throat> we've got a, actually a, a somewhat light agenda this week because we're still sort of in limbo waiting for some budget things and a few other things. We actually don't have any regular new business, but we do have some things to talk about. So we've got our minutes, our COVID update, um, a little placeholder for budget stuff, and then any um, select board or town administrator updates. And we got a few things on there. So why don't we get rolling with the minutes from April 5th. Motion. <laughs> All right, I heard that second. I was making <laughs> my way back. back to yep. <laughs> All right, all those in favor of the minutes from April 5th. Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that. <laughs> David, you look like Max Headroom. Remember that show? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> I need all the zigzag lines around my head. You know? Yeah, you just need the zigzag lines. Yeah. Yep. Every now and then I'll just go like, yeah, like that. There you go. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Uh, Lori, how are we doing for our COVID update this week? I think we're doing the exact same as we were last week. Okay. Um, the new reporting out said we had 7.7. I'd love to know where a 0.7 of a person is, but I, <laughs> um, and I think the next report that comes out will say we have eight. So okay. it's basically the same, neither up nor down. Um, we did get a report of three new cases in town today, but the fire chief and I are questioning the data. So I've okay. got some emails out. Um, we think that maybe the address is incorrect because um, oh. it says there was two positive cases at a certain address and Steve called to check up on them and they said, no, oh, they're fine. They've been vaccinated and they never tested positive. Oh, really? All right. So we're yeah. trying to figure out <laughs> where Maven went wrong with this one. Hmm. Um, yeah. So that's my only interesting anecdote for the day. All Otherwise, right. well, that's good. At least everything is well. Okay, good. At least it's not up. That's always good. Yes, for sure. Plateau and dropping is what we're, what we're looking for. So, yeah. all right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Any um, any updates on your end, COVID wise, Jeff? Nope. Uh... Latest color was gray last week, which is less than five total cases for the previous two week period. So that's the, that's the lowest we can be. There you go. All right. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It's color we can All be. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, with respect to that, with respect to that color change, it's up to, you know, our residents to continue to be vigilant and We've all exactly. heard it for over a year now, so. Yep. yep. Still stick stay with focused. the masks and, yep, hang in stay there. Focused, stay disciplined, stay a little bit apart, do the right yep. thing. We're getting close, so. Right. <clears throat> all right. All right. All right, well, thanks. Appreciate it, Lori. Have a good thanks, week. Thanks, EMD. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Two. All right, and we have our placeholder for budget discussions, but I know we're having a, or at least with, assuming we get all our figures and we do have a meeting, a joint meeting schedule, we're gonna hop on and join them for once, the finance committee on Wednesday at six, tentatively right now, right, Jeff? So. Yep, yep the meeting has been posted. Um, we did get some initial new growth figures that I'm, not confident in, so I'm not going to share them right now, but yeah. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to refine them on Wednesday and have them ready. And, and if not, we can uh, discuss potentially postponing until we do have solid numbers. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll be one of the important inputs on the revenue side. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. So, okay. <clears throat> 
you have any other like um, anything else for the budget discussion right now until we get those numbers in? Uh, no, uh, we had another meeting with uh, the accountant and treasurer collector just to review the, the current accounts and um, the budget spreadsheet to make sure that uh, the account numbers associated with each line item are, are correct and that's right. where the money is going and figured this is a good time with a new accountant to make sure he's familiar with after town meeting how, how yep. to make sure all the accounts are funded and everything um, and it's a great learning for me too so that that's really helpful and then after that I think we're going to sit down and go through the special revenue funds and try and make sure they're all um, clean and accurate. And then some of those that maybe only have a penny or $5 left in them, consider closing right. them if there's no yep. need to keep them up. And then just sort of some housekeeping um, would be the next yep. I'm sort of like municipal accounting spring cleaning. <laughs> so Jeff, with the transfer or turnover with the uh, contracted accounting service, are we closer to being reconciled to within 60 or 90 days? We are, yes. Uh, so we are, the cash book has been reconciled up through December. Um, that was, and then last week, uh, that was two weeks ago. So they've been working on Janu getting January and February reconciled as well. And um, Excellent. They talked about a, a new process to hopefully make that continue, um, in making sure that what's being entered into the accounting software is matches up with the cash book before it's entered so that it won't fall, continue to fall behind. So, yeah. And treasurer collector mm -hmm. and accountant are working more in sync. Yeah. That's Absolutely. good. So it sounds like that, to hear it. the change there has helped a little. Well, we've had we've had trouble in the last. We have had challenges in the last half a dozen years, where it seemed every other year or once triennially we'd have this gigantic project for whatever reason, and it's better to have it be simply programmatic within a a sixty day snapshot. To probably where the outside of where you want to be, you know, 30 to 45 is, is a sweet spot. Uh, it, that really gives you guidance that your systems are all working. So if we're, if we're closing December talking about January now, based on what we were discussing in July and August, that's a marked improvement. And the closer we can make that a, a dynamic program, the better the whole town will be. Yep, that is true. <clears throat> all right, thanks. All right. <clears throat> um, next up, we have any select board updates. I'll go, I'll point this way. I think Scott's go, that Tom. way tonight. All right. <laughs> so please, police negotiations continue. There was a meeting last Thursday where some ground was made. Uh, there's another meeting this Thursday. Then there's a two week break, almost a two week break. Um, but we're close enough that we may only take a couple of meetings at this point. Oh, that's good. Nice. Now, that's not to say there's not something that we can carry over. And when I say carry over, right. maybe it's in the form of an MOU. But that reality is, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the money parts. That's the punchline. Yep. Down to the brass tax part of it. Yep. Right. Right. That's good. Well, thanks to you and everybody else involved with that. It seems to be going... Going in, well in, as usual. So, in all yeah. candor, I missed last meeting for a variety of reasons, but Jeff has uh, done more than yeoman's work on this. I think he actually likes contract negotiations. Oh, that's something to keep in mind, huh? Hey, it's fun. As long as it's not my own. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> exactly. It's always easier when it's not yours. Uh, all right, Tom? A couple things. First thing is... Um, Jeff and I met with Mass DOT, um, the contractor, um, arborist, water commissioners, um, and others at 
uh, in front of the button ball tree on Friday. Um, and I, and I think Jeff, you, you correct me if, if I misstate, but I think we're, we're all on the same page on a lot of the things that are ongoing. Um, not to say things may not change, but the, the first thing is we're going to the town has uh, negotiated with the contractor and we're gonna be putting up some metal fence to uh, designate the tree protection zone around the, uh, the button ball tree uh, to de better define it. Um, we also are strongly considering eliminating the turnout that's presently there. Um, people may ask why. Um, one of the number one reasons for tr uh, tree failure um, after construction is the compaction of the soil around that tree. So people pulling off the road um, right by the tree is, is really not a is not a, a great thing for the survival of the tree long term. And while we were there, um, a car did stop, pull over, not to look at the tree, but to talk on the cell phone. Um, uh, yeah. Well, when you think that you could have gone up a little bit further and pulled into a parking area to talk on the cell phone, it would make sense. So, so um, the first option was the first offer. Um, the contractor was going to put up some. Uh, um, granite curb curbing and our arborist said well you probably do more damage by digging down the 12 or 18 inches for the curbing so what are the options you have and they came up with either California curbing or Cape Cod curbing whatever that is What's but that? everybody said that would be a great thing so we're going to be eliminating that turnoff. That's the there asphalt all curbing curbing right yeah. Um, yeah. Just so people can't easily turn off right there. Yep. We also talked about um, the sidewalk, and and it was suggested that the sidewalk next next to the tree is presently constituted. There is no real reason for taking that asphalt and concrete out of there. Um, cause it was supposed to be moved five, five feet to the East. So the thought has been to, um, build that up to flat with a binder course and a tough coat and just to match the grade, maintain ADA compliance, um, and not do any digging around the tree. I think that was our final decision on Friday, but I think since then we have some, um, there's some other various opinions about that. So we're still looking at that, but we are looking at the sidewalk um, and what's going to happen there. Um, well, Tom, when you say also, the sidewalk, you're talking specific to the button ball area, like under, under the yeah, drip right. edge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That, that actually from, from basically Scott, from drive, drive between driveway to driveway. Okay. That okay. makes sense. Yep. Well, it, it kind of does. And if you look at it, there's towards south on the south side next to the driveway there, you, there you can see where a where a um, tree stump still is in thing. So that that has to be taken out of there. Right. But if you look at that particular area of sidewalk, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Yep. But there's there's a there there's some discussion right now. What they're trying to look at what would be least disruptive to the tree going forward. So Jeff is going to moderate arborists for the next four or five weeks. Oh, nice. Um, so they can come <laughs> up. Well, I, and again, I, I mean, everybody kind of has, not everybody, there, there's a couple different camps of, you know, what people want to do. So Jeff is going to oh. moderate and he's going to, on his time, He's going to probably take a course in uh, arborist studies at the university. Um, 
and, and by the time he gets done, he's probably going to know more about trees and spading of roots and all that than he'd ever want to know. But, um, and, and again, I go back to talking to Claire Higgins once, the mayor of Northampton. And I remember asking her once what was a, the thing that you never expected when you became mayor. And she said that I would know as much as I do about how to run a dump. Because um, at that time, Northampton was having trouble with their dump. So she became a, a trash trashologist. So Jeff's going to become a right, rheologist, right? right? There you go. Um, but, you know, the contractor did, you know, and, it, and then we talked about um, on the east side, underground, um, underground, the present underground um, clay piping, you know, is it going to be abandoned in place or if it's going to be add flow fill going to be added to it? So there was there were some discussions that you know the engineer you know our, our engineer is going to consider and and give us some recommendations on so we'll be talking about that um and i think the you know the project wanted people to understand there is going to be digging there is going to be trenching there is going to be um trench boxes you know to have to go in so there is there there is going to be some work ongoing um, so they're going to have to be careful, you know, so, but they understand they're going to have to be careful. Now, I also did talk to Natalie um, because Saturday morning, because, it, you know, it is a DOT, mass DOT project. And I wanted to let her know how, you know, what uh, District 2 was saying. And um, so she, she was thankful of being kept in, kept in the loop. And, um, you know, if, if, and I told her, I said, you know, the, our president, you know, the, the present board, um, it really doesn't have a problem with people showing the concern that they did. I mean, I don't know the, at more, all. the more eyes that are on that job, the more, yep. you know, people out ask questions, I think we'll get a better job. And, and no one, no one should, no one should feel that their input is not valued because it is. We're not going to get mad about it because we we want as good a job as anybody. For us, we have four years invested plus in the project, so we may yeah. know certain things that other people don't. Um, but I, I told her, I said, Natalie, we don't care. We, we, we don't care if people are watching the job. We don't care if people write us emails. We, we encourage it because those those eyes are just added added eyes to the project that that'll end up being a better job for us. So. And she agreed. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Good. So, David, I think that's about it. Okay. Oh, and so, and, and, okay. and, and on COVID uh, vaccine, um, hmm. we're, we're kind of in a, we're kind of in a, um, a low between local vaccination centers and, and such. And, the FERCOG over the next two weeks are going to be monitoring um, how it's going um, because we may we may start drive throughs rotating drive throughs in the near future. So, but they want to see how a couple of things go over the next couple next couple of weeks. Um, so I would stand by for additional information. And April nineteenth, anybody that wants a vaccine can sign up for a vaccine. So. Yep. That's it, David. All right. Thanks. All right. I'll turn it over to you, Jeff, for some town administrator updates. Sure. Um, just one, one thing to add uh, to what Tom said about North Main Street, which is that in, in addition to the button ball tree, uh, we also discussed additional protections for some of the smaller trees and um, fully encircling any tree that has a diameter of 15, 15. 15 yeah, inches yep. or more. And then the trees with smaller diameters would still have stakes and caution tape and whatever existing fence is already there um, just to close it off to, to make it clear um, that, that it is a tree protection zone. Um, and, and we're also gonna try and get signage for the fence, especially around the button ball tree, identifying oh. the tree protection zone. Um, and, then, and that's all chain link now, right? Going forward, so for the button ball. Yep, as soon as it gets delivered. Um, uh, a, a piece of recent news, that's good news. Um, we had applied for district local technical assistance funds from uh, 
Burkog and um, I believe our top priority was the housing plan. Um, it is getting funded, so that's exciting. So we're updating the housing plan. Nice. Uh, there, we, we actually got to extend the scope of our municipal vulnerability preparedness plan grant because we had some leftover funds. And so we're, we're using some of those funds to finish off the open space and recreation plan. Those nice. funds have to be expended by the end of the fiscal year. Um, so that's the, that's what they're focusing on now. But as soon as that's complete, we're going to, or mostly complete, we're going to move on to the housing production plan. So those are two aspects of the master plan. Uh, I guess it makes sense to look and see what other elements of the master plan yeah, are so, the farthest in the rears as far as updating goes so that we have a cohesive in particular. You know, we've been successful in these grant rounds because these plans, whether it's housing production or open space, have been up to date and we've applied in those categories. And in those categories, we've been really successful and that's been very helpful. The question I guess is, is there opportunity that we're missing? It's a heavy lift oftentimes with a lot of meetings to get those updated and approved. But the COG has been very helpful in the last two cycles in particular on the housing production plan. They've been really exceptional to work with. And the open space and park, I mean, we wouldn't have the Riverside Park if we didn't have our, our park plan, PAR, we were, and we were not able to apply for park grant rounds. That comes right. out of that, how's that, not the housing plan, but that element of the master plan, open space and conservation being updated. So, you know, you can look at that look river at that park river and all park the work all that's the gone on out here and only because that plan was up to date. All right, it makes a big difference. So I guess the, the circling back, maybe dusting off that master plan and saying, huh, what, what area, if any, are we missing? Yep. That was the first activated. place I went to when we said that. Yeah, and try to knock off as much as we can. Right, right. Thank you. Um, and then the only other update is that uh, we the town office building has been open for about a week uh, to the public, limited hours, 10 to 1. Um, so far, it's gone really smoothly. Everybody has been... Uh, you know, following the rules, signing signing the sheets, coming in. We haven't uh, had a, a, a tremendous influx of visitors. I think people are still respecting the, the request to do as much as you can online or by the phone um, for everybody's safety. But just wanted to say that things are, are going well and, and remind people that if you do uh, have a need to come in, that we are open Monday through Wednesday, 10 to 1. Nice. Thanks for the reminder. All right. That is actually concludes our regularly scheduled business, unless we have any public comments. Open that up for any, if we have any. All right. Um, so next week we'll have some more exciting budget stuff to talk about. We'll have some more numbers then. So that'll be, and we'll be meeting with the, if all goes well with the um, finance committee. So we'll have more budget excitement next week, which will be good. So. Should we be looking at the annual town meeting warrant schedule and starting our countdown? I probably think that's probably a good time to start. <clears throat> yeah. Like time I, of year. I think the uh, warrant articles are due May 6th, I think. So about okay. three weeks. Um, yeah, that's important to bear in mind because, you know, we, we've, we have a deferred schedule probably, well, potentially for the last time, we don't want to fall off or into any traps by thinking that it's really that far out. Yeah. It's going to be here before you know it. Not, it's, it's not going. that far out. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is very true. <clears throat> All right. And I see on here, and uh, next week was Patriots Day, so we will not have our meeting on Monday. We'll have it uh, the following day on Tuesday at the usual okay. time, so just so folks know. <clears throat> so, all right. Um, I'll just say congratulations to UMass for their first uh, national hockey title there. So, it was good. Hopefully, 
people were a little cautious while celebrating. So um, somehow celebrating and cautious don't often sound in, in the same sentence. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I did see a lot of masks in the footage, but you know, there you go. that Love was it. only for that brief time. So who knows, you know? But all right. So if there's nothing else, we'll take a. Oh, Tom's gone dark, so it must be that time. Well, then, so is <laughs> so is Jeff at the same time. I just said one a minute ago. So, we'll take a motion to adjourn if there is one. Motion. All I'll right. Second. All right. All those in favor of adjourning at uh, seven o two. Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you, next week. And we'll see you see Wednesday. You next week. That's right.